Hey everybody, Karen Bryant with you. And today, I would say, it's really by popular demand. Paul Kaig kicking back with me. I got to be honest with you, Paul. Every time I put a video out of you at one of your fights, walking by after a win, everybody's like, why don't you ever interview Paul? And, I've asked uh, the same question. We have been friends for what, probably about five years. Yeah, yeah. And you've never had me on any of your podcasts. Maybe it's maybe I've just got a face for the radio. Maybe that's for it. No, it's not the face for radio. I think part of it is the is the time difference sometimes. Um, and then you've got your own podcast, and you and now you're like a big deal. I'm lucky I even could wrangle you for five minutes today. I've always got time for you. Uh, I mean, we, we're still with a couple of whiskeys, are we not? Yes, yes. Oh my God, we are definitely owed some whiskey. I feel like we're owed the whiskey after, from from like going way back to when you beat Jamal. Um, there's yeah. yeah, there's a there's a lot going on here. Okay, so let's get to this though. Obviously, you have a big fight coming up with Kyo Bohalio, and you know he's on a tear. He's a guy that has a big bright future, but I feel like these are the kind of guys that always come up against Paul Craig, and then they're like. Oh, oh yeah. I know. Um, it feels like one of those That's, matchups again, right? I know. It's. Uh, I think I produced my best work when my back's against the wall. When you yeah. when you expect me to lose. That's when I, I dig deep, and I genuinely believe this is a really good matchup for us. It's when you think, Paul Craig, this is an easy matchup for him. A jiu-jitsu guy versus a striker, that's when I'm like, meh. And there's like, there's like some funny memes out there when it's like, when Paul, could, when Paul can be bothered turning up. And it's not that I'm not bothered turning up, it's just, there's loads of different things that go into this sport. It's not just one thing. It's not just like, the fight camp is brilliant, but there's all these things that make up a fight camp, including making weight, how the training's been, training partners, there's a whole host of things that go into this, and sometimes you zig when you should zag, and I genuinely believe in that top 10, top 15 in any division, given any given night, MD can win and MD can lose, even the guys that are meant to win, and you think about, like, Adesanya was meant to absolutely piece up Sean Strickland, and then we have a new champion, and that's just the way this sport is. Yeah, it is, and I'm glad that you're able to take that perspective with it because some people do really, um, maybe they wallow too much when something doesn't go their way, right? Or they, or they, they, they celebrate the highs too much too, and I think that's yeah. fair. And I feel like that. I mean, that was the thing with you and Brendan Allen. I feel like you know, if you guys fought ten times, it it could have gone fifty fifty, right? I mean, you're both yeah. so good. Um, is that what you kind of take away from that of that last matchup with him? Like as you're moving forward into this one. Yep, yeah, definitely. MD I've been in with. I know it can be like a flip of a coin sometimes. The UFC matchmaking is very, very good. And they know what they're doing. They know who they want to push. They know who they want to move up. And I genuinely believe that it's in this situation, it's definitely Kyle that they want to get the push. We're in his hometown. Uh, they've flown me nearly 13 hours across the, the pond to, to have this massive upset. And that's what I'm looking for. Like, uh, this is what gets me out of bed in the morning, the, the fear the, the unknown, um, and that's why I do this sport. I don't do this sport for anything other than glory. And when you're not getting glory for the sport, then it's time to walk away. And I genuinely believe at the age of 36, I'm just coming out of my peak. When you look at the numbers of guys in the division and guys mm -hmm. in the higher divisions, the the age of 35 is like this number where guys get into their body and they know exactly what they're doing. I think I've had something like 18 fights in the UFC, I've had a long career, fought some of the best guys, and it's only going to get better for me. I can't, like, I can't, this is not it over. This is it just beginning, and it's like the best is yet to come. Whole what? host of things happened uh, going back like two years ago, change a team, yeah. and it takes a bit of time to bed yourself in. It takes a bit of time to deal with new coaches, new training partners, and I genuinely believe, and it's, it's one of these things that everybody says anyway, this is the best I've ever felt in my skin in my ability to strike, in my jiu-jitsu. I'm not making stupid mistakes on the ground anymore. And I was doing that back in the day, um, but now I'm a, I believe any any version of Paul leading up to this point would take a spanking off of me right now. I'm just a far better version of myself. Well, I, I love to hear that. And you said a lot of things here that that I kind of want to unpack because um, – I, I'm 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 glad to hear that you feel that the best is yet to come, um, because that 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 makes 
that makes a lot of people, I'm sure, feel good because you do kind of carry the whole back of Scotland on your on your shoulders. That's a whole other thing. But I'm glad yep. to hear that you feel the best is yet to come. And I feel like this is something that you and I have spoken about before where you did kind of have to grow up in front of us in the UFC. Yep. I, I know you're the, the Bama champ, but you still didn't have that many fights under your belt, right? And I feel that we've watched you grow up here in the UFC and now the fact that you, you've you you've gone through this, you've changed teams, you've changed weight classes, to hear you feel like you're at your best now is awesome. Like that feels really yeah. good to hear. It was uh, at the point you don't, you only know what you know. Um, yeah. So I genuinely believe that I was doing everything right. And it's not until you go out and try different experiences, travel the world, train with different people, uh, and work with different guys in your camp. Like for a long time, it was just myself and Brian who was yeah. doing this. And then now I've got like a whole team around about me. So I've got a nutritionist, I've got a strength and conditioning coach. Mm -hmm. And it's just about every single time I go out, I want to get better. But it's the days when you don't get better or you and yourself don't feel better about this sport, then that's when it's time to kind of walk away. Mm -hmm. As I move forward, everything that the, the, the numbers through strength and conditioning, uh, the, what I'm doing in the gym, like striking-wise, jiu-jitsu-wise, it's only getting better. I'm getting more creative. And I think it's just coming with, with, with the age. It's experience. Mm -hmm. And that's something that definitely stands me in good stead going up against Kyle at the weekend. You know, he's come in here 5-0, and oh, um, very good run for the UFC. Mm -hmm. But I'm a, I'm a wily old dog, you know. Sometimes, sometimes a young buck doesn't dethrone the old bill, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I do know what you're saying. Uh, I do know what you're saying. And that's the whole thing too, though. You, you got a certain style about you, Paul. And that is that um, you give your fans like a mild heart attack um yep. every fight there's there's always the like oh no he like, oh 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 shit he's still here <laughs> um, he's still he's still hanging in there i know see when i first started this journey when i signed four fights to the ufc like I, at no point in my life did i think that this was going to be this long-winded process at 18 fights yeah. like i signed that first contract and i went on about a skid had my first fight but like everything was coming up paul felt great after that first fight and then just bump after bump until I get that last minute submission. And it's taken me a long time to realize, like I had this kind of imposter syndrome where I was like, I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be in the UFC. Like, and I used this like a, like a crutch almost like, I'm just this wee guy from Scotland who should have amounted too much in the UFC. No, I should have amounted too much. I train hard every single day. I live and breathe this sport. So why do I need to use this crutch? You're kidding on them, this guy who, who shouldn't amount too much. I should amount too much because I put in the work. And this sport is all about how much hours on the mat, how much stress you can put your body through and still be able to get up and do the same thing day after day until it comes fight time. Yeah, well, you do. You have you have all the things and you, you should believe in yourself. You are the guy like you are this. And, and I want to kind of back up to what you were saying before about you know, traveling and seeing the world and, 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 and the changing of the teams and getting, and getting into your best form, right? Because that is something that's tough with fighters. It's, you know, uh, uh, dance with the, you know, dance with the girl that brought you here or whatever at the prom, right? Like th there's that sense of, I got to have the loyalty to the, to my team. And, you know, these are the ones I came up with and I got to have my loyalty to my guys. And I have seen, and we have seen over and over where people's loyalties have maybe gotten in the way of them advancing in their career. And it's, and it's a hard, you know, I'll, it comes sometimes to this inflection point where either something happened or whatever, or you just know, I can't grow anymore. And that, that's a difficult situation to be in, but I'm glad that you took the steps to go somewhere else because you do have to get uncomfortable for a while yep. before you can get comfortable again. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's, uh, we, 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 we learn under pressure. Um, yeah. And it's, uh, this is not a, a slight on the team I was with because I love all the guys and I, mm -hmm. like, they're, they're all doing amazing. Like we've got Chris who was just fine at the weekend, headlining in Scotland, selling out this card. And then I've got guys like Michael Blair and then even Coach Brian. All these guys help me get to where I am. But as you're saying, loyalty is a two-way thing, isn't it? It's like they should be loyal to me and be like, right, you have to go on and, and, and go somewhere different. Uh, and as, as, we spoke, as we said there, it's like coaches need to realise that in themselves. There's so many coaches that will hang on to a fighter and it will ultimately it will lead to their demise. Um, yeah. But... Everything happens for a reason. I'm a big believer in that. Uh, I don't get caught in the weeds. And I'm like, I moved there two years ago and 
we basically had to work our ass off. I basically had to, the first month I was at the Scottish, uh, move from Scottish Hit Squad to a higher level, I had to fight. I had to fight to be part of that team. And it's mm-hmm. it, it, it's, it's like a tribe mentality. I came from another clan to try and join another right. team. And I have to embed myself as one of the guys. And I can't thank the guys in the gym enough for putting me out of my comfort zone um, and, and, and showing me new tricks. Because sometimes they say, you can't teach an old dog new tricks, but far from it. I'm, the, I'm, I'm definitely an old dog within this sport, but I, I've, I've learned some very beautiful tricks over the last two years. I love it. Well, and also not for nothing, it's pretty great to see when you go down and uh, you're working with Tom Aspinall and like you get big bodies in there like you and Mick and stuff like that working around too. I mean, like it's not even just that you found this new team and you found some great people, but it's also kind of at this great time in um, martial arts in Great Britain, even we should stay right. Yep. And, and that part of the world, I really feel like there's not only more attention, but with Leon being the champ and stuff like there's, there's just there, I feel like there's more momentum for you guys too. And it's almost like maybe collectively you guys are all believing like, holy shit, like, yeah, actually we are the guys. We're the guys. Yep. For a long time, it had been, we had uh, the rise of like the Brazilians with the Jiu Jitsu mm-hmm. and then it was the American wrestling style. And then now I find like even Europe as a whole, Europe are getting a lot more accolades that they deserve uh, and the UK scene for MMA is huge. I was one of these guys who was kind of riding that 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 wave of, there was a whole host of guys who went in and left and there wasn't a massive UK scene. But now when you look at who's there, it's, it's, it's flourishing. And guys like Tom Aspinall, Aspinall becoming a champ and being a character and able to sell the sport is just doing wonders for the sport because the sport is still early days within the UK and you see that through probably uh, ticket sales and pay-per-view buys mm-hmm. but I genuinely believe that it's only going to get better uh, and, the, and I, I'm going to be one of these like forerunners of UK MMA and I'm going to have to walk off into the sunset and look at look back at the, the young whippersnappers coming up and be ah, they've grown so much. They've grown so much. We're so <laughs> proud and then didn't Tom get his own show on like BBC now or something too? Uh, I think it's uh, TNT, which is basically like our main sports channel. So he's right. like the, the face of that. And you can't get a better guy. He's, he's, he's very articulate. He's mm-hmm. um, so good at uh, communicating and he's getting his like opinions across. So I, I can't, I don't think you can get a better person in that, in that spot. I literally was going to say the same thing. Like he's the, he's the perfect ambassador for it, and I'm 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 such a fan. And I just like he was one of those guys from the very first time when you meet you know you meet some people, and we, I think we first met him over on Fight Island or something, and it was just like this guy's special. You could just tell. Yeah. You know, you could just tell. And then what's amazing where he's like, yeah, you know, after what fight was it? He was like, ah, after this such and such fight, I decided to like actually go all in. You're like, holy shnikes. Like that was you halfway in before. Like, I know. damn, and damn. like he's just he's just a talent. The first time I ever uh, sparred with him, um, it was down in Team Cowbum. I, I uh-huh. think I was getting ready for, I was getting ready for some fight anyway, and I was blown away. And I think he only maybe had like one fight. Was struggling to get matched. COVID had hit, and do you remember they were made to do that London card? It was like, yeah. uh, I remember sitting in the car, uh, and they're like, "Listen, Paul, can you get to America?" And I said, "Are you? Can you?" guarantee me that I'll get home and they said we can't but we'll guarantee you'll get a fight and I said I can't do it I can't leave the family I can't travel yeah. around the world during this this time yeah. so uh they offered me a fight in the UK they done this like sort of hybrid uh, cage warriors card a few right. months or maybe like a month later Tom Aspinall fought on it they offered me to Tom Aspinall I was like get to yourself I'm not fighting that guy's a man mountain he he moves like a, a feather weight and he hits like a Mack truck there is no hope in hell you are going to get me going to the octagon with him. Um, but it just shows you the guy went on to be this world champion. And I think everybody who'd ever seen him fling a punch or grapple was like, this kid's got something special and he's going to be a champion. And I think it's going to take it's going to take an absolute monster to take him off the, the top spot in that heavyweight division. He, he can do it all. And it comes to that thing where it's like, gone in the days of mixed martial artists just being good in one area. Like right. he's a striker, he's a tie guy, he's a boxer, wrestler, whatever is your discipline. Now it's like he's an MMA fighter and he's damn scary. And it's um, this is a new wave of mixed martial arts. Yeah, it's incredible. You're like, look, how stupid do I look then? You're like, Aye. Uh, 
<laughs> I'm not going in there with him. <laughs> Aye. Imagine him lying on top of you. Like I've 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 had the, the opportunity of having him on top of you in the, the, the safety of a gym with his dad yep. protecting me. Never right. mind having like have, letting, letting uh, Herb Dean let me get my face chewed up. So like, no, nah, you know what? Right, I'll pass on that one. I'm gonna pass. I'm gonna pass. Speaking of speaking of being bright, do you still do you still have a smart car? I do have a smart car. Um still rock that smart car. Everybody everybody loves to see me jump out of a smart car and they all think like, why have you not got a better car? And I'm like, I'm just trying to save the world one day at a time, me and my wee smart car. Um but I think it's coming to the end of its time. It's it's, it's done it's done some done some miles going from gym back up there. I drive it down to England all the time. So I think it's I think I'm needing to update my car, but I can't walk away from a smart car. It's it's just a beautiful little car. <laughs> I got to see a visual of you getting in and out of it, though, because it, it has to. I mean, now that you're a middleweight, it's not quite as funny, but it is it is so clown car esque to see a big man getting out of a little teeny smart car. Um, just... I'm not I'm, I'm not sure if you, uh, you you remember Mark Godbeer, who used to train at the Scottish yes. Hit Squad and yes. was in the UFC, had some really good fights. Mm -hmm. um, the best image is me and him both in it. Like, like we're touching each other like. Mark, do you want to give me some space? And he's like, I can't. Eh? <laughs> it's just so tight. But for a for a single guy just to be driving about Scotland, yeah. it's absolutely perfect for me. As much as I have it as a as maybe one kid and a and a dog, and that's all I need. Yes. Well, you got that view, that sweet dog. I, okay. So I've got a few things. So I know everybody's curious about it with the hair being blonde. It was green beforehand. So what what exactly is the backstory with the hair? Um, I just wanted a little bit of a change. Um, yeah. It's kind of like a like not a coming at age, but it's just changing yourself up, becoming someone different. Um, no one likes it. Everybody hates it. Um, really? I did say that I I, I kind of like it, you know. Got a silver fox going on here. Um, I call you. I, I call you now, blonde heart. <laughs> blonde heart. Oh, I quite like it. Somebody did say to me. They said, "Why don't you dye?" You, you know, obviously, I do the face paint. They said, "Why don't you dye half your hair blue?" And I was like, because it's bad enough getting face paint off <laughs> in 24 hours to fight, never mind getting face paint and to die. And it's just, yeah. I'm just going to end up looking like a smurf. But um, <laughs> yeah, it was just one of these spur of the moment things. And uh, um, it definitely went sideways. I ended up with like ginger hair. And uh, I then went, ah, it's fine, I'll put in some, some blue hair dye. Because that'll yeah. look better. In my head, putting in the, the blue hair dye would look good and it went green. And I was like, ah. Oh. Ah, oh, poor guy. But then I had to go to a concert with this hair. I had to rock a hat. And, so like, and then after a few days, the paralyzing dye came out, and then I'll get it refixed. And now I've got this kind of Brazilian blonde bombshell that I'm going for now. Nice. Exactly. That works. That works. Well, yeah, because there was, you know, the whole back in the day right was it blonde well i mean obviously if we're going way back as kevin randleman and all that but you know when blonde brunson kind of came out and then he went on yep. the tear and everything and so there is kind of that whole thing and um brian battle had that long curly hair like my hair and he changed his blonde and he's been killing it and so i'm i think it works for, i actually liked the green i thought the green was kind of cool um right, but I'll, it was straight up ginger bit, like full-on orange for a minute full-on orange it was you might have seen this i was like proper scottish um but before I shave it, I will dye it. I will dye it bright green for you. Um, yes. I ended up with a, I ended up with a pink dye as well. Yeah. In my head, I thought pink will be better. Pink, yeah. Like I, I don't think I don't think I'm going to go for the pink. Um, but maybe maybe somebody will mess with me and say, "Listen, Paul, the pink is definitely you." Um, yeah. But I'm going to shave it off after the fight, and then I'll restart it again. It's just like shedding this kind of cloak, isn't it? Of yeah. of well, if if we call it the beard you. So this is this is a beard you for three oh one. Nice, nice. No, it's yeah, it 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 it's working for you. Although it, it's like, and in contrast, it's like making the beard even look like more luscious and fantastic by Thank by you contrast. Very much. <laughs> you still playing guitar? I'm um, indeed. Uh, I, I keep meaning, meaning to bring a guitar with me, and I'm like, I'm going to travel late this time. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I'm just like, I'll find one when I'm out there. I'll get one when I'm out there, and I've not got one. But it's good just to unwind and have like some stuff to do. Uh, in my downtime, and that's why I play guitar. I, I generally love it. I don't have the confidence to to play it for millions of people, you know, like guys who make YouTube videos or go on concerts. Like, I definitely don't have the, the, 
the confidence to, confidence to do that. Um, but maybe a couple of whiskies, KB, and uh, I'll find a guitar somewhere in Rio. There must be a guitar shop, and I'll yeah. I'll sing some 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 beautiful love songs. Nice, nice. Yeah, people um, people don't actually know that you're actually good at that. Like you're you're actually you're actually good at that. Um, Thank you. We're gonna have to get the UFC talent show going on or something like that. I imagine there's going to be somebody who's far better than me. There's uh, one of the UFC staffs called Robert Plant, so I'm imagining he's going to be an amazing guitarist. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. Hey, so um, I know you got a, got a lot to get to. I do want to ask, though, um, you are, um, you know, how active do you want to be this year? I know there's, a, you know, the fight coming up in Manchester. That one's going to be kind of close for you. But if you feel like you're hitting your stride now, right, if you feel like things are dialing in, if you feel like you're coming into your own, what 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 should your fans expect? Like what what can we what can we look forward to you to from you this year? And kind of just like have you reset goals? Have you reset intentions now that you've settled into this middleweight, Paul, and that you're you know ready to move forward from here? And with these you know couple fights behind you now, you're already yep. set to go. Yep, it's um, it's still a it's still kind of a learning process. Mm -hmm. One of the issues we had going back to bank back to back with Brendan Allen. We come off that amazing win against Munoz in mm -hmm. London, and then we went straight back into camp. Now, one of the things that, being a middleweight, uh, I have to deplete all my, my resources. So, like, uh, white blood cells drop, red blood cells drop. There's a lot of things, and going back to back, they just drop even further. So we need to make sure we get into, like, a really safe level. One of the things that last fight camp, I had, like, it doesn't. It, it would not have mattered who stood in front of me. I had zero testosterone, and I might as well have put him online because let somebody else get the use of him because I had no testosterone at all. And going into that fight, I was very emotional as well. Um, the the I done some PR work for the for the UFC, and it was about a basketball coach who had cancer and died. Yeah, I it was Jimmy V Week. I remember that. I remember talking well, to you listen, beforehand, and it's really I'm, emotional. I, it's emotional, and I'm, I normally have my emotions very under control, um, but when you have zero testosterone and your body's like really close to being on the, the, the brink of, not failure, but it's, it, it shouldn't be down that low, um, going with all the blood tests, it, it was just, I, I just couldn't stop myself from crying. Now, that's not taking any away from Brendan Allen, because Brendan Allen put a beating on me, and I can't take that away from him. But as I said, there's a whole host of things that led into that fight that wasn't sitting well with me. Um, and one of them was the the back-to-back the -back fight camps. So we need at least a few, maybe like a couple of months, a month, two months at the most, to rebuild and then start for a full version of Paul and then cut to middleweight. The advantages of being a, a, the, the frame that I've got and cutting all the way down to a middleweight, the advantages are huge and that's why we do it. But we can't do any more than three fights a year, so it has to be the two. Um, we'll hit this fight, hope everything goes well. Like I'm, I genuinely believe myself and my team have prepared for Kyle, uh, and I'm not taking anything away from him as well. Like An amazing athlete when it comes to striking and grappling, and just physique-wise, but I genuinely believe this is a very favourable fight for me. So we, we deal with this fight, and then we look at what's, what's ahead for us. Um, I still believe I've got at least four years left in this sport. I genuinely believe that in my, myself. Um, everything still works, knees, elbows. I've got no long-term injuries. So as long as that keeps up, man, I'm going to ride, I'm going to ride this until the wheels fall off. I love to hear it. Well, that gives you time to fight now, take a little break. Um, you can fight in Paris. How about that? Yeah, the say of love, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. Um, excited to, I'm, you know, I'm not sure we're allowed to, I, I'm not allowed to say what's officially on the records or <clears throat> on the books or what's not officially on the books, but. <laughs> Gay pity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, that, that, that all makes a lot of sense and I'm glad to hear it and I'm sorry, you know, and it's hard when you, when a fight doesn't go your way and when you speak about it after the fact and, you know, it, it's not excuses. It's just, you're just yep. saying what happened, right? I mean, that, yep. that's what happened. So are we able to, this time though, your things are going to be different. You, you're able to make Hu sure that's remedied, what, what that hugely, the testosterone and all that stuff is going to be different. Yep. Yeah. Yep. yep. Uh, we're hugely ahead of where we should be uh, mm -hmm. with regards to all the, because 
because I want to make sure my health, because my health is paramount, regardless of what this sport gives me and takes from me, health is paramount in this sport. Um, so I get regular blood checks, I get yet regular uh, doctor's appointments to make sure everything's going all right. And we got a blood test um, before we fought Alan at the start of the camp and coming to the end of the camp and the numbers were drastic. Like looking at them, the nutritionist was not happy. Uh, this time when I sent him my blood tests, he was excited and uh, that's all we can ask for. We're, we're ahead of where we were for Brendan Allen, which is a bonus. And I feel it in myself. You know when your body's not 100% mm -hmm. and the same again, not making excuses. This sport is all like, there's nothing worse than guys saying, I shoulda, woulda, coulda. This is yeah. like, like I, I should have done that. I would have done that. But we don't get a redo in this sport. It's mm -hmm. once you've made the, once you've made the commitment and the loss or the win, there's no going back. It's like, when I think about the, the, the that last setting victory over Ankalaev, mm -hmm. that was that was a fight where it could have went either way. If I went to the judges, I was I was lost. I think I was probably down every three round. Um, but that's this sport. He should have done that. He shouldn't have tapped, and it's all that kind of stuff that makes this sport so beautiful. I love it. And you now know too, like you said, you've, you recognize um, mistakes you've made, right? Like fight IQ is a real thing and you really can only get yep. it in a fight. And you realize sometimes in the transition moments, like, oh, if I had only done this instead of that, if the head was on the outside instead of this, like, th I mean, sometimes mm -hmm. it's a simple one little thing, but you don't know it until you learn it on the job. And like you said, you can't do yep. it over, but you can only take that forward to the next one. Yep, this sport is, is, is dealt with micro settings, isn't it? It's not even settings, it's micro settings because a micro setting can change the head position of you being to the left or the right, the difference yeah. of you getting knocked out or uh, cut off. Well, I, uh, I love to see it and we're looking for you to... I don't know, either set another triangle or something. You already have so many records. Um, I could talk to you all day, but I know you got a lot to get to. But um, I do appreciate you taking the time to kick back with me today. And, you know, you're the first fight on the main card. Everybody knows that fight when you're put in that position. It's for yeah. a reason. You always deliver. You, I forget how many performance bonuses you have, like seven or eight. Or I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I was speaking to somebody the other day, and they said, how many fights you had in the UFC? And I says, I think I've had about 10 fights. Yeah. And they went, I, 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 that seems like you should have more. And I was like... Aye, and then he came back to me and maybe like 10 minutes later and went, you've had 18 fights in the UFC, Paul. And I was like, huh, that's, uh, that's interesting. That definitely doesn't feel like I've had 18 fights. And my face is definitely not showing it. We've got a wee bit of scar tissue above one of my eyebrows, but yeah. it's part of this sport, isn't it? Yeah, you're hanging in there. Yeah, I, I, you're right, though. I don't know that I would have said 18 UFC fights for you either. Like, that's kind of weird. I know. And I could be lying as well. I, I, I I just don't know, and it's the same again. I don't know how many wins I've got. I don't get bogged down with living in the past. It needs to be about moving forward, doesn't it? And it sounds a bit cliche and cheesy, and it's like it's all about how fast you can move forward and all this right. nonsense. But I generally, like, once I've thought, once I've put that camp behind me, I tend not to live in it. And it's like yeah. people are like, oh, what about your submission victory over insert name? I'm like, I don't think about them. I move forward, and I think about what's coming around the corner for me. Yeah. Nice. Well, that's a good mindset to have. Well, right around the corner uh, is Kayo Bahalio. So folks should look for you at UFC 301 uh, and hopefully later on in the year as well. And of course, uh, you got the podcast leathered with Bungard yep. and Ross and stuff. And those yep. those come out new episodes on Sundays, all right? No. Oh, I think we're still we're still trying to find out where, where, where the best time for our, for our audience. But it's, um, if you're easily offended, this is not me telling you not to support my podcast. If you're easily offended, do not listen to my podcast because um, it can get a bit dark at times. Um, some of the stories, like I believe I'm the guy that kind of keeps it on the straight and narrow. Uh -huh. Some of the stories that come out in this podcast are wild. And I think if more people know, if more people know about this podcast, I think we'll get shut down. I think it's because it's just a little bit, I genuinely believe that. I think it's just because it's a little bit, Nobody, but like, we've got a few f major fans, but um, I, I genuinely believe if, if somebody, uh, somebody with power listen to this, we'd be done, genuinely done. Maybe some, some time, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I feel like just in general, like if you like if you either you either know Bungard and understand what you're gonna get with him or not, and then Ross. 
I know the, I the stories it. are wild. So one of the, one of the stories that uh, Chris was telling a, a few weeks ago on the podcast was he's obviously cutting for a weight and yeah. uh, he ends up fighting in a, a petrol station just because he shoots for the hip. He's a guy who's like one of these madmen who, in a state of reduced calories, stress of a show, he kind of right. and flies off the handles. And I'm like, what, like, what are you playing at? Why are you starting a fight in a petrol station? Why are you growling at folk? Like, I just feel like I'm a dad to this guy. Like, like stop. Totally. Stop pulling your sister's hair. Right. Get back in the car. I know, but yeah. it is. It's like, the reason it doesn't feel like work for me is because I enjoy it so much. Right. And people are like, oh, you should have more guests. And I'm like, I kind of like just us three talking. It's, it's beautiful. <laughs> it's like, like a conversation. It's really, it and is I think fun. I think that's why people enjoy it because they're like yeah. it feels like we're part of this conversation, uh, but I I love it um, and it's just a bit of fun. It is good. It is good, and I and I I agree with you. It's like, it's it's just the hanging out with your friends part. It's the shoot. It's like you would. And the thing is, is like I feel like you guys are having the same conversations, obviously, that you would have whether or not there were microphones there and being yep. filmed. <laughs> <laughs> and there's, there's very there's very little cut out. Um, yeah. I don't think I don't even cut much out. I think there's maybe been maybe one or two stories. Yeah. There was there was definitely a story where I said to Chris, "What about you hiding in a bush?" And he looks at me like, like dead in the eyes and says, "What with a gun?" <laughs> and I was like, "Not that time." <laughs> I want to hear that story. And it's that kind of stuff where it's like I'll say something to him and he'll say another story and it'll be like right. we can't have that so we have to then cut it yeah. but there's, there's there's like the stories that make it in are, uh, are, are some of some are brilliant um and it's just what it's like to be a fighter what it's like to grow up in scotland yeah. and that's that's what it is it's good stuff uh well folks can find that on youtube and uh yeah they can find you fighting on ufc 301 against kyle bahalio yep. and um I, yeah i'm just really glad that you had the time today and i'm on my way to brazil i'll um my flight leaves in a few hours, so I'll be seeing you soon. I'll so see you soon. For, yeah, thanks for your time today. Great. I'll speak to you soon. Stay safe. Yeah.